Hello everyone and welcome to this short video on foreign exchange risk, uh, often also called currency exchange risk. Uh, so this video is going to be building off the two previous videos, the first one the primer on how money works uh, and the second one on the foreign exchange market or forex. Uh, so here we're going to look at how uh, international businesses uh, actually manage their uh, foreign exchange risk or currency exchange risk which arises from engaging in forex or the foreign exchange market uh, so international businesses have to frequently exchange large amounts of currency both for operational and investment reasons um, but they do experience a very high foreign exchange risk as a consequence uh, so delaying advertising and prices processing payments uh, funneling money for investment purposes or to repatriate profits or revenues all of this means that any exchange rate shifts in uh, forex peers which are peers of currencies uh, can lose the international business uh, money even if they have a theoretical healthy profit margin uh, now there are a range of uh, mechanisms that international businesses use to try and manage this risk including currency swaps and forwards um, to try and hedge against exchange rate fluctuations um, but we have to first identify what kind of risks are present and how international businesses uh, can monitor those risks. Uh, so there is no formal uh, control over the exchange uh, peers. Uh, so the rate of exchange between, say, the euro and pound sterling or between uh, the yen and uh, the dollar uh, is not actually controlled by any single centralized body, but rather is driven by market forces. So the perception of, of, of future trends by speculators and traders uh, and core supply versus de demand dynamics. Uh, but there are still a number of factors and metrics that international businesses can use to try and monitor risk levels as a precursor to try and control them. Uh, so inflation rates are always a good indicator to how quickly currencies are losing their existing value, uh, as well as looking at uh, future inflation rate predictions. Uh, so that can give a, a quite a, a strong indication of uh, whether that currency pair is going to experience long term trends or long term shifts. Uh, as well as this, we can add uh, examining government deficits. So. Uh, the amount and rate of government borrowing uh, to give an indication of the internal cost of currency production or whether quantitative easing or other monetary uh, or fiscal measures are on the horizon. Uh, those also can indicate a potential lowering of value, which we can add to inflation rates uh, and predicted inflation rates uh, to understand the internal value of, uh, of that particular currency. Uh, and therefore the 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 potential for long term trends uh, as well as short term fluctuations against particular external currencies um that would to uh, that that would really help us understand the internal fluctuations but as well as this we can understand those uh with particular currency pairs so uh currency being uh, paired or the exchange with a with another external currency so again the, the euro and the sterling or, or the yen and the uh, the rand or whatever particular currency pair you're looking at um, the relationship between those two currencies uh, will also have particular indicators or markers uh, that help international businesses assess risk so the balance of trade between two countries uh, as well as general trade flows uh, can help us understand what the overall demand pattern for a particular currency is against another currency uh, that can be very helpful to uh, to try and understand the the particular exchange risk for that currency pair uh, and then lastly uh, we have to remember that uh, it's not just purely economic factors but political factors will play a big role uh, in the uh, particular stability or instability of a, of, of a given currency. So uh, existing or future potential political upheaval or instability uh, really does uh, fundamentally strike at the continuity and the favorability of monetary or fiscal policies. So anything which indicates uh, long term or approaching instability or upheaval uh, really is going to, to markedly reduce demand uh, and therefore uh, reduce the value of that currency against its peer. 
uh, that helps us understand how international businesses uh, can try and monitor and, and evaluate uh, potential trends for either currency pairs or the stability of a uh, of the valuation of a particular currency. Uh, but we also have uh, three distinct types of uh, foreign exchange risk or, or currency exchange risk. Uh, and uh, this really will help uh, international businesses understand both their investment decisions uh, as well as uh, how to organize their international operations to try and minimize uh, the overall foreign exchange risk. Uh, so if we first look at transaction risks, uh, so these are risks that derive fundamentally from day-to-day -day operation uh, and the uh, the movement of cash around uh, the, the international business internally. Uh, so accounts receivables, payables, revenues, uh, the flow of profits and dividends. Uh, so any kind of day-to-day -day operational movement of cash uh, can pose transaction risks. Uh, so this is caused by the delay between the transaction uh, and actually the settlement of the account. So the delay between the agreement that uh, there's going to be an incoming payment uh, and that payment actually happening and then the delay between that and that payment being moved to uh, uh, to a different currency, perhaps being paid back to the uh, uh, to to an account in the home currency, uh, the home country, and therefore uh, the the home currency of the of the international business. Uh, so you could have an agreement that there's going to be an exchange of say uh, five uh, say five thousand pounds. Uh, but the international business receiving that payment of five thousand uh, pounds is an American company, and they need to uh, uh, move that uh, sum back to the U.S. and therefore move it into dollars. Uh, well, the agreement may have been uh, for five thousand pounds, but by the time the uh, transaction actually happens, uh, it may be that the uh, value of the dollar has dipped against the pound. Uh, which would result in a, a large number of dollars or the value of the dollar has risen against a pound which would mean that the actual sum would be less than anticipated. Uh, so there are a range of ways that companies can manage transaction risks particularly if they're predictable transactions uh, such as forward contracts where you have an agreed upon exchange rate uh, for the payment so let's say you make the agreement for the payment in January uh, and you fix the contract at a particular exchange rate, perhaps the exchange rate which is currently present in January, uh, and then even though the payment may happen in, in September or October, uh, any subsequent fluctuations in the exchange rate between January and, say, October uh, are irrelevant because the contract has specified the exact uh, rate of exchange, uh, so the settlement of the account will uh, will negate any transaction risk. Uh, but any kind of frequent movements of, of cash for operational reasons uh, between different countries will always incur uh, a significant transaction risk. Uh, now, that's to do with uh, with operational movement of cash. Translation risk uh, doesn't actually happen because cash is being moved and currencies are being exchanged. Uh, but this is a, a risk in the shifting valuation uh, of assets uh, uh, onto balance sheets uh, where the, the balance sheet is operating across multiple different currencies. Uh, so let's say that an international business actually owns assets in a foreign country or country, not its its home country of uh, origin. Um, so even though let's say it's a, a British company in origin, so its balance sheet is going to be in pound sterling, uh, but it holds assets in say India and those assets in India are valued in rupees. Uh, so based on the uh, the currency exchange rate between the Indian rupee and pound sterling, uh, it may be that the asset uh, in Indian rupees hasn't changed at all. So the value of the asset uh, remains uh, stable and fixed. Uh, but because, let's say, the, the Indian rupee has become devalued against the pound sterling, so uh, the rupee has actually lost value in relation to pound sterling, uh, this could mean on the, the balance sheet, uh, of the of of the international business uh, that asset has depreciated is actually lost value uh, so here for reporting purposes you can have significant fluctuations in the valuation of assets of liabilities equities uh, and even entire subsidiaries uh, based upon fluctuating uh, 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 exchange rates um, again the challenges of maintaining a, a single balance sheet 
for an international uh, uh, business when it actually operates and holds assets, liabilities and so on uh, across a number of different uh, countries can be quite significant. <clears throat> and uh, lastly, our third and final exchange risk is uh, economic risk. Uh, so this uh, is not related to either the operational or the reporting uh, activities of transaction and translation risks, uh, but rather economic risk relates to the long term risk of operation across uh, uh, different uh, different currencies and different economic systems. Uh, so uh, this is the risk really sometimes also known as a forecast risk uh, that the market value of, of uh, the international business as a whole or in part uh, is really influenced by the exposure to exchange rate fluctuations. Uh, so you can have uh, various political instabilities, long term currency uh, uh, rate changes and trends. Uh, things that really call into question the business model or the business operations in entire zones. Uh, so here, long term shifts uh, in the exchange rate between two countries uh, could lead to uh, unsustainable uh, operation on part of the international business. So the entire operation within a particular country uh, could be called into question uh, and the long term investments could fundamentally be altered. 